talking yeah. about Jim Harbaugh, you know, uh, Tim, 40-3 and three over the past three years, an undefeated national championship, 15-0. and 0. He returns to the school, that his alma mater, where he played quarterback for Bo Schembechler. Like you said, Michigan can't give him a Super Bowl ring. He wants to return. He's going to coach the Los Angeles Chargers. Right. I think he's going to do a fantastic job. But I just need your help in understanding why so many people and networks like ESPN hate Jim Harbaugh. I understand he's a polarizing figure and he's pro-player compensation and pro-life. He's a disruptor, you know, pushes the boundaries in terms of NCAA compliance rules and stuff like that. I get that. I just, I've seen more polarizing figures like Urban Meyer not get this same sort of treatment. What, what, yeah. what is the deal with why so many people hate Jim Harbaugh? In large measure, because of that, that honesty about his faith and spirituality, that's a lot of it, okay? Yeah. I mean, there is a there is absolutely um, a, a movement in today's media that is anti-Christian in its approach, uh, and anybody that's that devout that wears that on their chest is going to get called out. You know, as a um, and I say this because I very rarely go in this direction. Mm. All right, as a broadcaster, because I don't want to offend anybody. Um, yeah. I think other than politics, the thing that that most alienates people around the country is when you do go uh, the route of, of, of religion or faith, mm -hmm. any faith-based commentary. <clears throat> and it became almost old hat uh, for young reporters when they were coming up through the ranks to be told how to handle it when a player or a coach started any interview with you in the aftermath of a game by saying, first, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior. You know, that kind of thing made, uh, uh, made people in our business aware to, to coach up uh, the reporters to um, not not uh, not take the microphone away, but to just move on. Okay, yeah. don't don't ask any follow up questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was part of media training one hundred and one. Get on to the meat of the conversation. So there's some truth to why you know old fashioned television truth on why you don't go that route when a when a proud coach or player that's Christian wants to go uh, in that direction. I'm not saying that's wrong. For the media. In fact, I think it's right. You do want to get to the meat of the, he, he's got the microphone. He earned his opportunity to say how devout he or she is, let him do it, but then get on to the meat of, of the matter. But now in today's world where corporations are going out of their way, okay, to, to tell you what their policies are, mm -hmm. be they uh, woke uh, or not so woke or, or, or uh, heavily conservative based, they're going to tell you what they're their feelings are. And as a result, you're seeing the media take a direction on certain people based on what they believe the character of the individual might possibly be. And, and you point out ESPN, I think to some extent, <clears throat> it's unfair to just throw them under the bus uh, because they're on the air all damn day talking about supposedly sports all damn day. <laughs> Not really anybody is other than FS1, I guess, on cable. And anybody in your positions, guys, that are on streaming television uh, today, the, the, the bottom line is when someone is that out front, you're going to take on a certain amount of negativity. Mm -hmm. You just have to understand that. You got to know that. And Jim does. You know, I, I took him on, and I think I mentioned this to you before, before my first game about the depth chart situation back in 2017. Yeah. And I had known Jim since he played for Bo. In 86, I covered him my first year on the sidelines and hosting uh, uh, college football CFA primetime. Bo Schembechler did an interview with me, and uh, he was, uh, he was uh, the third-place Heisman getter that day on the first weekend in December of 1986. Jim has always been uh, the guy that you loved if you had on your team, the guy you hated if you didn't. Okay, yeah. He just was a guy that stirred the pot. That's who he is, mm -hmm. and he's been true to that through his career at Michigan. So you're going to have a strong opinion one way or the other on Jim, and he knows that. It comes with the territory. But, but to answer your question specifically, David, it comes back down to this, okay? If you, as a corporation, view yourself as progressive, a person like Jim Harbaugh scares the living hell out of you. Yeah, okay. no, as a disruptor, they, they I understand that. And that's a fantastic response. Thank you for sharing that. I want Flame and Dragon here yep. to jump in. But I just want to, just one follow-up there on, on you talking about 
uh, going after ESPN is not quite fair. And this is why I thought you were going to go yeah. in a different direction with this. I don't see yeah. it as being unfair because that's where I see all the criticism coming from, from Paul Feinbaum, from Peter Burns. Ryan McGee just wrote an article that went live that said Jim Harbaugh's legacy at Michigan is complicated. No, it's not. I don't see Colin Cowherd and Joel Klatt and the guys at Fox doing that, which is why I'm just, uh, it feels to me like it is a situation where whoever the network has an affiliation up. with that conference, you know, Fox, we have well, an affiliation affiliation with the Big Ten, let's support Big Ten coaches. ESPN has affiliation with the other conferences. To me, I grew up watching ESPN all day long, all day, every day. I need you to be sort of the arbiter of truth in the sports space, yeah. not pick and choose yeah. sides on which coaches you like based well, on what the television contracts are. Yeah, well, those days are gone, yeah, okay? Yeah. It's, it's like I grew up on Huntley Brinkley and uh, Walter Cronkite <laughs> and Peter Jennings, all right? But the bottom line is... Um, those guys are gone and mm -hmm. the direction of news is, has gone in a different direction. And, and, and that's the circumstances that we face today is that sports basically, okay. In its own lighthearted way, we like to think of ourselves as a toy department. We like to think of ourselves as, Hey, this is the departure from the daily travails of, of people's pursuits in life. But truthfully, it's not, uh, not anymore. And that's my point to you. Yeah, the guys out front that, that are maybe writing these stories. And by the way, some of the names you mentioned, I respect the hell out of them. Ryan McGee, Paul Feinbaum, those are good guys, friends of mine, all right? But when the company wants certain things to be said and or written, uh, social justice obligations need to be filled, okay? Mm. <clears throat> and I don't think uh, there, there's any doubt that social op uh, justice obligations have to be filled uh, at ESPN. And so the people that are employed there understand it. And, uh, and know it, okay? On the rundown, the producers know it, and the broadcasters, and sometimes I think the journalists are aware of it. So uh, I, I'm not saying that they are writing what just the company wants them to write, but I'm sure. saying that, yeah, I get it. that culture... I'm saying that culture is what takes them in that in that direction. Well, thank goodness direction for the Daily Wire. About. Yeah, that's what we got Granite Company. Daily Timmy Wire, B. Man. Hey, YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, or Blaine's going to turn into a dragon, and we all know what happened in King's Landing. All right.